summer is just beginning and the glory of the garden is unfolding and it's a great pleasure today to have a wonderful visitor here, Jacka McVicker, the Queen of Herbs, whose herb nursery is not far from here in fact. And we've also, Jacka and I have been in organic growing for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and Far so we, we want to share with you some of that history, how we came about to be organic growers and why. And yeah, just a bit about our lives in general and how we're gardening now, how she got into herbs, how I got into vegetables. And, and we'll, we'll, we're will we we're going to converse and see how, where it takes us. So Jacka, well, welcome. <laughs> thank you very much. It's inspirational to be here, but it also takes me back in time oh. <laughs> because I was brought up about mm, six fields away. You know, if you think about yeah, it, Pip, I was brought up in Pilton, which really isn't that far away. As the crow flies, it's about three miles. <laughs> yeah, and my mum had the most fantastic vegetable garden and she also had herbs, prolific herbs. But that was also in Chimagna, which is where I was born. You know, she was totally sustainable. So for me, going into gardening was part of my genes. And do you know something? Actually, totally <laughs> by the by, I learnt last week, week before last, that my great grandfather, who I never met, my dad's dad, his passion was collecting plants, but his real passion was propagating. Oh no, you got, you're making that uh, up. <laughs> no, I'm not. And so it missed two generations and it landed up with me. Uh, with you, big time. And, and yeah. I absolutely adore propagating. Ah. But my story starts with my children are about 17 months apart. And my husband was working in French Guiana. And so I was left at home with his two tinies. And a girlfriend of mine came in and said, oh, Jackie, can I help myself to some French tarragon? Because I had my herb garden, of course. And this is in a semi-detached in Bristol. So she went out the back, got the French tarragon, and I'd been sitting that day thinking, what can I do from home? Ah, OK, hey. what can I do with these two tinies who yeah. I can't leave? I've got no family backup, nothing like that. Mm. So I thought, I can grow that. Mm. Yeah. And then I'd been reading this... Antonia Balfour, Antonia, uh, this book, which was written in the 60s, all about organics. So it wasn't Eve Balfour who founded That's the Soil right. Association? Thank you very much. Brilliant. Well, well she wrote there. that in 1943. Was the it 43? Soil, the and I soil. lived it, yeah. I read it in the 60s. Right. And then I read it again yeah. Yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. And it, it was just, <laughs> it was amazing. And it all made sense. So I decided there and then, because of the children, because of everything else, I didn't want to have chemicals around. I didn't want to hurt the soil. I wanted the, for me, just like you, but I look at it a different way, the soil is the engine of the garden. Yeah. So you, yeah. Need to, <laughs> you, you need to keep that healthy. And then, yeah, I was saying earlier to you, it's like when you drive a car, you've got petrol, and you put that in the car, and that means you go forwards and everyone sees the flashy car but it's the petrol that keeps the car going. So it's the soil. If you feed the soil, then you get the flash on top. Yeah, although I would add to that. I mean, you know, I, I remember in the 80s when I started and, and it was all chemical farming and people, people were using fertilizers a lot and a lot of emphasis on feeding and not on the biology part. And that's the bit that the car doesn't The living have. bit. Yeah, the living bit. The living bit, yeah. and, and that's what I'm loving that is now greater knowledge. But when, when I began in the 80s, like you, it was, um, I was very marginal. <laughs> you know, right out on a limb. Yeah, people laughed, exactly. They, they so laughed at me when I used it, to go around the shows going, have you got any peat-free compost? <laughs> oh, you can't. Someone accused me of wanting peat-free, I would cause listeria. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember all yeah. these things. People thought I was so wacky. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and when, when I... Talking about organic in the 80s, that, that was definitely enough. Uh, people didn't want to go the next leap of soil so much because I was doing that dig in the 80s and nobody paid any attention to that. It was just organic was so new and revolutionary. You know, when I was interviewed by Jeff Hamilton on the BBC yeah. and he, he was saying like, Charles, these cabbages, you mean they're grown without any artificial fertilizer or pesticide? I just said, yeah. I mean, for me, it just seemed normal. Yeah, but, well, it's like now, I, I, I mean, it is wonderful that people now are beginning to understand and everything we've both said for a rather long <laughs> <Yeah>. time 
you know, has come to fruition, which is also very sad, you know, that people are now rewilding, great. But actually, if they understood more about which plants mm -hmm. to rewild with. You know, I was talking to you earlier about biodiversity and how having the Lamiaceae family, which is mm. the mint family plants, you know, the thai and the sage, the oreganos yeah. and the peters and things, they add pollinators to a garden. And pollinators are as much part of the ecosystem as the soil as the plant. Mm. And if you want good plants, you've got to look after the whole. But in the context of your rewilding point, then, do you mean uh, it should be better to specifically plant some things rather than just let nature do it randomly? I think you should let nature do it randomly, but if you're letting nature do it randomly, you need to have a it lot of grazed. <laughs> and you need it grazed, mm -hmm. because that's right. how the animal right. looks yeah. after the ground. Yeah. You know, to drive here today, mm. I, I came via Barrington Coombe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you know in Barrington yeah. Coombe, yeah. you've got the goats. Mm. And they're the only thing that can keep the, all the rock face beautifully tidy, and, mm. but also within the natural flora and fauna, and they leave the flowers. Because mm. right. yeah. they don't eat yeah. the flowers. Yeah. But for you, oh, yeah. <laughs> but for you, Charles, when you started, just like when I started, you know, there was no guidance for me on how to propagate organically. Sure, yeah, I mean, we've been finding our way, haven't we? Mm. And wh when I started, I was re really wanting to do the no dig and there was certainly not much of that going on at any market garden scale. Mm. And the first time I tried it, I was worried about weeds <laughs> taking over if I wasn't gonna, you know, I think a lot, a lot of farmers at the time were using, um, organic farmers were using tools like the rotavator uh, to keep on top of weeds, you know, just chop them down mm. and start again. And around here, there's a lovely saying that chickweed follows the rotavator. So they were getting so <laughs> many more weeds because they overcultivated the soil. But that was organic, and that was allowed as organic. Which I, looking back on it, I found this is really strange because, you know, organic is supposed to be about protecting nature and looking after wildlife. But people were only looking at the wildlife above ground. And the, hmm. even the Soil Association in the 1990s, I don't think they'd forgotten about the wildlife below ground. Well, they found it difficult with me oh, yeah? because I was growing it in pots. Oh, God, there's a big debate about that, though, isn't it? Is that oh, even it was, organic it, if you're it, growing it, it in pots? Exactly. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Why is it, why is it <laughs> not organic? Yeah. So. You, know, <laughs> you know, if as long as my substrate, or my potting compost, whatever you like mm. to call it, mm. is organic, yeah. and then I'm using integrated pest management yeah. and, um, and no well, actual chemicals. I mean, what, otherwise, what, what by definition, you can't have a nursery, can you? You no. can't have an organic nursery. No. And you can't grow things in soil nowadays and go and dig them up for people. That doesn't no. make sense, really. So, 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 yeah. so you know, um, and yeah. then you'll lead me on to another thing that's been hugely controversial, which is pots. Ah, right, yeah. Okay, so yes, we're, we've come out of black pots <laughs> and we're going into these beige jobbies. That's fine. But actually, my pots, my liners, I start with cuttings or seed, I then pot up to eight centimetre pots, then pot up to a litre pot, and then to a two litre, and I sell you the two litre. Mm. So the two litre is the only thing that leaves the nursery. Mm. My pots, those liners, are 20 years old. Brilliant. And you probably don't wash them or sterilise them? Occasionally. <laughs> you know, if I get... Because oh, you, you're doing the herb plants more specifically, the propagation. If, if, if I get... Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm a real pest and disease nut, yeah, okay. as you've already gathered. Yeah. You know, so I'm looking out for things like root aphid. Yeah, fair enough. And I don't want yeah. to give you root aphid. Mm. So, yeah. you know, that's um, a no-no. So they'll get washed. Yeah, because here with vegetables, it's a much faster turner of, of yes. plants. And I've got trays that go back to the 1980s. <laughs> and mm. I've never washed or done anything to them. I just take out the plant, plant it, and then refill with compost and start again. Mm. Uh, and I think that has been generally made too complicated because there are some situations like yours where it's necessary. But well, most people, I think, don't I'll tell you a vegetables. sad story. My glass house, okay, I use um, capillary matting, mm -hmm. okay, and so my cuttings are on that. And one year, and I use a water tank, recycled water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but again, that's now new. Um, and I was watering with this water from my water tank. I got phytophthora. I lost mm -hmm. the complete crop of cuttings. Wow. Got into the capillary matting. So a fungal infection and just went the, through the lot, blitzed How it. could you stop that by cleaning the water in the tank more? Or? I have, and I now use mains. I don't dare oh, risk okay. it. I, it's yeah. okay on mature plants, you, it doesn't right. affect them, but my little seedlings, 
wipe out. Oh, that's interesting. But I mean, now, if... now we can use, ah, oh, that's fantastic. Because people are now understanding how yeah. organic and sustainability is important, you can yeah. use biofungus. So right. I water yeah. Yeah. all my raised beds yeah. uh, every other year with a biofungus. Right, yeah. Yeah, there's much better it... support for all that, isn't there? Yeah, than there used to be. really much better. Hmm. So that's exciting. And then if you think about it also, the other exciting thing that's happening is that people are wanting to grow more themselves, yep. even if they're on a balcony. Mm. They're actually wanting to put something on the table. It's the nurture and the sort of hunter-gatherer. Well, what you're doing is great for that because you can, people can grow herbs in small spaces, can't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's one, one part can, of you it. You can grow a lot of vegetables <laughs> in a well, window yeah, you box. You can, salad leaves particularly. That's yeah, yeah really you can recommend. grow salad. Yeah. And you can grow potatoes in yeah. sacks. Yeah, true. And you can grow tomatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and something I've and got... And one courgette plant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Training um, down to your neighbour. I've got really keen on the whole microbe thing as well and how that links to food. And um, particularly in soil with no dig, when you get a healthy population of microbes. Because you know how a lot of people now have got gut problems with microbes. Mm -hmm. Microbial deficit, it turns out, from having food that's too squeaky clean. Well, um, if you look yeah, at both oh, our no, hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I did a training once. I thought when, when market gardening wasn't paying very well, and I thought I'll become a a kinesiologist therapist and I did two years of training and no one said anything all through that two years until I took my final exam and then the lady taking the course came up and said I have to fail you on your fingernails <laughs> like treating people um, you know what might be coming out of them but I tend to feel it's probably pretty healthy but yeah but, I've always got dirty fingernails. But, but the, maybe that's why that we're on the healthy side because we've always had our peck of dirt. I would like to think so. Exactly, the peck of dirt a year, I think, isn't it, that you meant yes. to eat, which is so many bushels. It's quite a lot, actually. It is. <laughs> I'm but sure it, I do, actually. <laughs> it links to, you know, the modern research now by nutritionists is all pointing in this direction. And I find that so validating because suddenly, you know, it makes us appreciate the soil more. I, I think it's, it is also the fact that children now are not allowed to get dirty. Mm. Well, yeah, most of them But anyway. you see, I used to... Yeah. bike ride all around here you know <laughs> yeah. in in those days we could yeah there was no fear there's no phone yeah mum just said looked at watch right be back <laughs> at this time yeah yeah and roughly which way are you going and that was it in case yeah. i fell off and grazed my knees and you also ran here just up the road you were in the first glastonbury festival weren't you Yes. <laughs> the very first one. <laughs> in um, oh, 69, was it 68, 69? Have you got a photo of that? Was it, was it 60? Yeah. It must be an image somewhere. Yeah, I think. I mm, don't know if there's, I've got, I've got the poster. Okay. Um, it, I've got the poster. I guess at the time you never imagined and, how that would Oh gosh, would I mean, I said to, said to Michael, I said, who would have thought yeah. when he built the stage out of milk crates and planks oh, of wood, brilliant. it was yeah. called the Pilton Blues Pop Festival. Oh, yeah, it right, wasn't okay. even called Glasgow in those days. Yeah. And yeah. not until the money came in to that happen. Oh, yeah. But yeah, who would have thought, you know, from that? And he paid us in milk and hog roast. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, good old Michael. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so uh, no, it was amazing. And then yeah. I left that group and I went and worked at Worthy two years later, I think it was when we built the pyramid. Mm. So I built the first pyramid as well, mm, right, part of yeah. the gang for that. And paid in the group that was formed out of um, out of uh, the guys who were building. So mm. we were first on the stage. That was um, fantastic. That's a nice credit. It was really fantastic mm. seeing the audience below us. It was just, it was amazing. Wow, I was just a teenager in those days. I know. <laughs> but then he is such a young sport. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I call him young Charles. <laughs> oh, <goodness>. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's flawed him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, it was at university, though, that I got interested in all this other thing, and I, I read a book by this Australian professor called, um, oh, it was about nutrition, and it was about treatment of animals, and that, that made me a vegetarian, and that's when I started getting interested in soil and um, chemicals. I realised that, you know, I'd grown up on a dairy farm around here, and mm. massive use of chemicals. In fact, my brother quite, got quite ill from dipping cows in organophosphates, you know, they were doing things like that. Really? Organophosphates yeah. is Agent Orange, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's pretty much the yeah. same chemical. And they were trying to get rid of warble fly in those days. So all the cows were being put through this bath and the people do, tending the whole operation, managing it, were, were getting wafts of this stuff. 
And you know, there, there were a lot of cases, weren't there? People doing sheep dips as well. In, she in the I remember the sheep dip. I remember the sheep. Yeah. I didn't know about the, the that one's, it's A lot of this stuff though has been kept pretty quiet and it's not really well known, but there's been a massive, there still wow. is terrible use of poison in farming. You know, like we're fighting at the moment, the, the paralid one, the, well, the that, weed killer that I, doesn't I, go away. I know, the weed killer that doesn't go away, that be careful everyone with the, with the bark that you buy. It can be on the bark, you mean? What? <laughs> Well, look, if they're killing the weeds round the trees... Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Well, if it's this particular week, though, which it yeah. could be that... Yeah, which you see, because, oh. I mean, just watching people spray... Yeah. Oh, and they have a spray certificate, really? Yeah. You know, the way yeah. they spray them, because they'll spray oh, rings round day. trees. Yeah. yeah. Don't. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, I, so that's made me quite paranoid, um, and I do use composted bark. Do, do you ever do a test on your compost before using it? Like with beans, for example. I mean, that's what I do here with field beans. I guess because I've always got... It's always in my mix for my cuttings and my things. That would be my first flag mm. if I had a problem. Right. Um, yeah. But I guess because my compost tends to be sterile, unlike yours. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. This is slightly different. But when you say it's, sterile, that, would that get rid of a persistent chemical or what? No, it wouldn't. Gosh. No, but this is an indication how we've got to keep moving the whole time. We've got learning new things. Well, well I mean, yeah. This stuff is still around. Being a grower of any form, mm. it keeps us yeah. young because we are learning. Yeah. We're forest firing the whole time. But I remember the organic conferences back in the 80s, and we were all young, <laughs> all in our 20s. <laughs> and, and it's great memories. And I remember I had that feeling of confidence, and, and, and you know, the future could be ours if, if mm. we played it right. And there were slogans like, Britain, 20% organic by the year 2000. You know, it was actually about 3% in the end, if you were lucky. And things haven't moved on in the same way. And what I've noticed happening at the same time is the other 97% have got a lot more dangerous. You know, the, the non-organic part of farming is, I think the chemicals are worse than they were even but, then. But I think, because I'm in my little bubble as a nursery, we've become much more eco. You know, okay. Okay. Uh, That's interesting. Yeah. much more right. you know the way we treat plants the introducing of biofungus the introduction of um in the tunnels if i get anything major but look that's the other thing that really winds me up if you get a bit <laughs> of green fly <laughs> yeah. why do you have to nuke it immediately yeah why don't you leave Where, it because yeah, yeah. if you leave it and the girls, I, they kept on at me, like, have you so much green fly, so much green fly? I said, wait. And it's now, incredible. if you go out there now, it's full of ladybirds. Oh, brilliant. Isn't that Full nice? of ladybirds yeah. and hoverflies. Yeah. And everybody's yeah. come. Yeah. Do, do you understand? Yeah, they totally. need to feed. It's yeah. all part of the chain. Yeah. If you don't, if you... Actually, take my hat off to him. I think it was Prince Charles who said, mm. we are part of this chain. You destroy any part of this, when he was talking about GM, mm. you destroy any part of that chain and it will have an effect on us because we are part. We're such an arrogant race <laughs> yes. that we don't look. At, look. In your field here, if you lay down on your back and looked up, you could actually see all the living life, mm. all the tiny bugs, Everything that's going on, we we don't stop. We don't see that, and how they all work together. Well, I think also above all, we don't see what's below our foot level. You uh -huh. know, there's so much going on and so on. Yes. That, that's actually the thing that excites me now. Although sometimes I feel daunted by how, how many chemicals, synthetic chemicals, are being used around us. The, the possibilities of no dig in, in my teaching work, I feel I'm reaching out to a lot of people, and, and that fuels me with more passion than anything, actually. The, and the ability of using the internet to do yes. that. You know, well, that when is... I get an internet, when, <laughs> hope someone's now. watching, we're only 0 0.79, I have no internet. When I get an internet, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you... um, I, I will do the same. I will teach. I'll teach mm. how to propagate, how to propagate organically and how to sow seeds with respect. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can that, teach me. That, that, <laughs> that's a joke at Charles because I am so pedantic on how we sow seed. I will never use my hands because my hands, you can see today, are hot, sweaty and grotty. And um, so that means they're slightly acid. Great microbes, huh? It's slightly acid, though. <laughs> They'll break down the casing. 
okay. of the seed. <laughs> and if you want to put that in the packet, you might waste that seed. Yeah, and enough. I spend hours cleaning seed, so I know yeah. how long it takes yeah. to clean seed. So I tease him because there he is with his mucky paws, sowing the seed, <laughs> da, 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 then puts it back in the packet. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> I've got green fingers so. <laughs> Bollocks. But, but going back to the internet, the, you know, what I love about it is that we can reach millions of people. And, and go back to the 80s, just I, linking those two things. It, back then, it, the change happened top down. And you had to persuade government or editors of magazines, whoever it might be, if you wanted change to happen, it had to be taught from the top. And now, with, with internet, we can, we can reach these, these millions of people and, and it's grassroots coming up from the bottom. And that's how I see the change. And that's where I feel a lot of organisations have got lost a bit because they're still talking to government ministers who never follow through on promises they make, you know. But we can just get people going. I, I think if we can actually get people... You've inspired people to grow. You know, and the older I get, you know, I realise that what you and I started with in the 80s is the roots of the future. Yeah, and with benefit of hindsight, at the time we didn't know that so much, we? Did we? didn't know that. And yeah. I do believe <clears throat> that we can actually now go forward. And I, I, get, I, like you, get excited when I actually show someone how a plant works. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. see that penny dropping and they and get, get they it. Get, they? Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It's, yeah. To me, that's just yeah. sort of like, oh. Yeah. Well, I love it with No it. Dig. A lot of times the comment I'll get is, whoa, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> really, that means you've got it. You really understood the process. Yes. And, and then you can do it. Yeah. And you can adapt to different conditions and have a bit of fun as well. Uh, that is the other thing, fun. Yeah. Plants will make you laugh. They'll make you cry, but they will make you <laughs> laugh. And you'll talk resilience by plants. Because, mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, you saw my myrtles. All my myrtles this year lost all their leaves. Okay? And I did a video on how to cut it back. And if you saw it now, they've all reshot. Up but there. anyone else yeah. would have ripped them out. Yeah, right. Yeah. They've gone, oh, it's dead. <laughs> yeah, whereas yeah. it was yeah. not dead. You've got to just stop and look. Mm. And... Uh, mm. And on a day like today, I can't think of nothing better. <laughs> no, this is where, yeah, this is the best bit. Yeah. <laughs> this is where all that hard work in the winter really Really pays freshen. off, yeah. yeah. Mm. It really does. Mm. But for you, what's, teaching is going to be more your thing now? Yeah, I'm, I'm really feeling that. Um, it, it feels the most worthwhile thing I can do. I still want the garden, so I've got to work out how to keep my garden going, my market garden, um, employ more people. Um, but I, I still also notice, you know, I still got to be there. You know that as well. You know, the, the, there's no manure like the farmer's foot. That's such a good thing. Uh, because just being there, you, it's amazing what you see and learn still. Yes. Uh, but I've somehow got to work out how to jug, jug, juggling the time, really. I, I could be full time teaching. I'm very aware of the time because of having this big birthday this year. And it's made me reflect how. I've got to get my skates on. Mm. Yeah, next five yeah. years, watch this space. Once I get internet, watch this space. <laughs> Great. Yeah, because... Okay, you know, so you're, um, you're going to be 70 this year, is that it? I am 70. Okay, so what was the big birthday? That, well, that was 70. That was this oh, okay. year. That was enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Young Charles. Um, yeah. you know, okay. Seriously, it makes you sit up and go, whoa. Well, I've been feeling that in my 60s too. You know, you, you're aware right. suddenly that your life is not forever and... You've got a lot of knowledge and wisdom you want to impart. I, I, I want to pass it on. Yeah. And I need to share it. And mm. so therefore, I'm going to teach much more. Um, and I'm mm. going to try. And also, but I, as you so rightly say, I'm still on a seven-day week on the nursery, mm. even though I employ people. Mm. So cut down slightly. Might be a good <laughs> idea. Slightly, yeah, six days. <laughs> <laughs> You're on a six. He yeah. gets a day off. Did you hear that up there? He gets a day off. <laughs> Well, more or less. Yes. Anyway, it's been absolutely fantastic to be here. It really has. Well, and thank you. And uh, may we meet again and maybe change, exchange ideas on maybe yeah. how we do things. That'd be nice to meet a, yours a, as well. A physical thing, you know, yeah. you know show mm -hmm. people how there are two techniques, we're both organic, how, but they come to the same part. They're the sum of the same part. Yeah, well, I mean, this herb garden's a nice example, isn't yeah. it? No dig, yeah. build soil fertility. Yeah. You get these wonderful herbs, you help to grow the plants, and that's yeah. a nice, nice mutual cooperation. It is. <laughs>
Uh, yeah. Check out the other video on that, actually, Father. We've made a really nice video on, on herbs and how to use them and enjoy them. And, and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Be good. Anyway, <laughs> stay safe. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs>